to any woman who is here or will be wife, hear and answer the following. Will I help him to achieve a fuller life by constantly endeavoring to broaden our horizon? Don't become a Jezebel because you are a wife. Will you marry this man, make him a better person? Will I use tact and sympathy with his little personal problems and help him understand himself? Your husband has 25% weaknesses and you have, you have succeeded in making him look like he's the worst man in the world. Nothing good can come out of him. No. Will I use tact, sympathy, with his little personal problems and help him understand himself? Men have ego. You need wisdom to deal with a man with a double ego that is not converted. Number three. Will I study him and get a clear idea of all the little things that make him happy and confident? Some women, you have, you, have, you have broken the confidence span of your husband. And some of you, the girls, the way you handle yourself, because of your cheap one, two by four IQ, you think you're on top of the world. You run every man down. You speak every man down. The question is, if you want to marry this man, you need to answer the question as a woman. If I marry him, can I study my boyfriend? Can I study my husband and have a full idea who he is? What makes him happy? What makes him confident? Every time we are done eating, Samola will tell you, thank you for providing. Thank you for paying the school fees. Thank you for doing this. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies, please. Every time, now it must be the men that must be bashed. Some of you, you are just Jezebels. You kill the men. And they have no confidence in them. Are you one? Will I share with him my little joys and successes and let him realize how much he contributes to my happiness? All it may take is to be talking to a friend and tell them, look, if not because of my husband, I will not be where I am today. You are telling him indirectly. And he's saying, she appreciates who I am, what I'm contributing. Will I overlook little irritabilities due to overwork and fatigue, pretending not to notice them, making allowances for the strain that the workplace can be and the responsibility of a family life can bring? Sometimes the men come and they are just tired. Those of you will be getting married. He will just be angry. Listen. Sometimes you just ignore them. Johnson or God's will, please. I'm going to take a shower, please. The food is on the table. I've set it up. Just let me know. All right. You don't want to go into any banter. So you are wise. Will I see that he has enough time for relaxation and quiet thought? Sometimes the women, the attention you need is like you are now trying to say you are the God of the man. Everything is not about you. Before you, he was once living. Even the woman who gave birth to you is not asking so much like you. Please, can you give him space? He's also a human being. Sometimes, listen, the men don't want any sex. Or they don't want anything. They just want to be there. They want to have a peace of mind. Take away your thing. He wants to sleep and think. He's having difficulty. So can't you notice me? Hey, you, they will kick you out. Give him some time to be on his own. When my feelings are aroused, and out of proportion, you are angry due to misunderstanding. Will I always try to better understand him, our mutual relationship, and myself suspending harsh judgment with thoughtful self-inquiry? Women, use your brains. Sometimes you look at the thing and answer yourself and don't even ask a question. Have I noticed any mannerism in myself that may be irritating to him? There are things you do that get him so angry. They are like his, how do they call them? I've forgotten the technical word. Triggers. You do this and he's like a madman. Will you use your brain and know those triggers? Number nine. Will I let him enjoy women's company 
without undue suspicion, I covered it, and jealousy, encouraging him to be sociable and helping him to, to find natural or to have fun and, and, and be at ease. But this is not for every, every man. So men, you allow them, you have eternal side chicks on your head. So you need to watch out on that one. A caution. After all, I have a daughter. So caution. But listen, sometimes the men just want to be themselves. For the father, he's talking to a young lady. Doesn't mean they have anything in common. Please. Will I allow him have an evening off sometime and not rely on or demand constant companionship? Ghana was playing soccer 2010 before we married. Just 30 days for us to marry, or three weeks. Ghana was going to play a game. It was a Wednesday. I love to watch soccer if it's not on the Sabbath. Then Samuela came. We are not married, though. Choose between the Ghana match or me. <laughs> Pastor, I look at my then girlfriend and say, I've chosen Ghana. I can be mean. <laughs> I've chosen Ghana. From that day, she has learned her lesson. If I'm going to watch soccer with the boys' boys, I recall one day, Susan was a girl, tiny girl, I think less than two years. We carried her. Midnight, there was a boxing match. My wife followed me. 2 a.m., we went to watch together. She just wanted to be in your company. I told you yesterday, I've got my, my area covered. You know. So sometimes the men just want to be alone. Lastly, women, ask yourself, will I cherish love and remain faithful to him? in case he gets bowed and physically challenged. If his stomach is now like eight-month pregnancy, and he's all like a round football, will you still love him? 